Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and uh, become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, before we do uh, get started, I want to... uh, encourage you, if you've not already, to pick up your copy of Slime Incorporated. It's my first ever detective novel. In it, private investigator Cole Eustick investigates a case of murder and dirty politics against the backdrop of the Idaho uh, gubernatorial race. It is available as a paperback and an ebook, and now it's available as an audiobook through audible.com and also in the iTunes store. So you can listen to the book, and you can also try Audible for free and choose Slime Incorporated uh, as your selection and thus get it for free. So uh, however you do it, I do encourage you to pick up your copy today. It's available at store.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of The Saint, uh, original air date, February 18th, 1951, and the episode is The Next of Kin. The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Oh, oh. All right, all right, I'm coming. Wait until I put my head on, can't you? Uh. You? Well, this is an unexpected displeasure. I gotta talk to you, Saint, quick. Let me in. All right, Blanco. I'm surprised at you. Four o'clock in the morning is no time for a man in your profession to pay social calls. Like I say, I gotta talk, and you gotta listen. I'm listening. They got a job gonna be pulled tomorrow. Today, I mean. It's a big deal, Saint. Big deal. I'm glad. I'd hate to think you'd retired from crime, Blanco. It would throw so many deserving policemen out of work. It's a dirty deal. Filthy. Uh Sounds like something right up your alley. Not this kind of thing, Saint. This is one line I draw, and it's a straight line, you hear? Yes, I hear. Before I know what the score is, before I know who they go to use it on, I rig it. The best job of its kind I ever do. It's going to work, and it ain't going to leave a trace. Yeah, I should never have had that spumoni right after a lobster dinner. Blanco, do you think if I get up and take some bicarb, you and the rest of this dream will go away? Listen to me. I can't go to the cops. You're the only one. You gotta stop it, Saint. You gotta. I gotta? Yeah, you gotta. And you only got till noon. Blanco, at the rate you're painting this picture, it's going to be at least noon before I know what it's all about. It's about murder. Oh, well, let's get down to personalities. Who is going to be murdered by whom? Why and how? Let's have the name of the potential victim as an appetizer, huh? We'll get down to the main course later. That calls for a kind of complicated answer. (laughs) It was kind of a complicated question. But do your best. Neatness counts. You remember Frank Kane? Of the Chicago Canes? Of Uh, course. Who could ever forget the inventor of the game of encase your friends in a barrel of cement and dump them in the river? Yeah, you'll remember. I also remember that when the federal men were just about to catch up with him in Central America a few years ago, he was discourteous enough to die a natural death. Yeah. Somebody died in Central America three years ago. Not Frank Kane? There are places where a buck here and a buck there can get any moniker you want on a death certificate. And Kane had plenty of bucks. Getting the corpse to plant in that same moniker is easy. 
So Frank Kane's still alive. Yeah, he's alive. But that ain't all. He was took. Wait. You hear something? What sort of something? Someone move in the hall. Now pour yourself some brandy and try and get your nerves back into waltz time, eh, Blanco? Now look, what about Frank Kane? You sure you didn't hear something? Yeah. I. Where are the lights? Who oh, turn off the down? Get down. Blanco. 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 Talk later. What about me? The, the girl. The, the, let them kill her. Who, Blanco? Who? She, she on way to party. The car sink. The car. Don't let me. So. <laughs> Good to see you again, Mr. Templer. And here I've been thinking you'd given up after I was drinking. You're right, just about have. And it's a pity because I like this bar of yours, Morgan. Why don't you make an honest saloon out of it and open up during legal hours? My customers would never stand for it. No? <laughs> My customers all learn to drink during prohibition. And speakeasies. The way they look at it, a drink just doesn't have any kick in it if it's legal. Yeah, and this is the part of the lost generation that's still lost, eh? <laughs> Would you like a table? Just some information. Yes? About a year ago, when I was one of your regular patrons, a lady used to frequent this place. A lady in this place? <laughs> her name was Violet, and so was the color of her hair. She used to sit at a table around the bend there and make tender speeches to a bottle of scotch. Do you remember Violet? Indeed I do. Where can I find her? At a table around the bend there, making tender speeches to a bottle of scotch. Mm, I should have known <laughs> There was a love that was fated to last. Thanks, Morgan. You're welcome, Mr. Templer. Hello, Violet. Go away. Oh, now that's no way to treat an old friend. Old friend? You're no old friend. Don't have friends. Go away. You mean you've forgotten me? What's your name? It's an old Scotch name. Eight years old. Sit down, friend. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, waiter. Yes, sir. The usual for the lady doubled, hmm? Coming right up, sir. Sit down again, friend. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. Look, speaking of friends, whatever became of uh, Louis Blanco? Blanco? Mm-hmm. You a friend of Blanco? A former friend. What do you want him for? You cop? No, no. I have some money for him. Money? Your money? What for? Well, he, um... Uh, he did a job for me. Job? Mm. How about? I'd like to pay him before he gets the wrong idea. <laughs> uh, where did he hang out? You don't know. What? What about the job he got, the garage? What garage? Central garage, 55th Street. Oh, oh yes, of course. Here you are, sir. Ah, my old friend. Violet, look, uh, tell me something. You know I like you. Yeah, I like you, Violet. Mm-hmm. But tell me, why does a fellow like Blanco hang around a garage? You don't know? No. You're no friend of Blanco. You're a cop. You're pumping me for him for... For him for... Just have a drink. Yeah, let's... Uh, how's Frank these days? Frank? If you know Blanco, you certainly must know Frank. Blanco used to work for him in the old days. Frank Kane, remember? Why do you torture me like this? You know Frank's dead. You sure? Sure. I ought to know whether or not I'm a widow. Why do you think I drink like this? Why do you think... Oh, look, uh, go sorry. away! Go away! Wake up. Hey, come on, wake huh? up. Huh? Oh. Oh, Guess I fell asleep. Gets kind of lonesome here in this garage all night. I'm sorry I woke you. Uh, that's okay, mister. Uh, you bringing a car in? No. Taking one out? I just want to talk. You woke me up just to talk to me? Hey, you said you were lonesome. What do you know about a man named Blanco? Blanco. Customer? I thought perhaps he worked here. Uh, nobody by that name here, mister. You sure? 
Sure, I'm sure. There's four of us working here. Me, Ed Williams, Pulaski, oh, and that new guy, Stevens. We take turns working nights. Tonight was my turn. The new man, Stevens, uh, what does he look like? Look, pal, why don't you give a guy a break? Huh? So we did time once. Is that any reason for you cops to come checking up on him every time you got nothing else to do? What does he look like? Uh, you don't get any help from me. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I believe in helping the law, but not when it starts hounding a guy. Well, I'll give it to you straight, friend. There was a murder committed tonight. Well, the chances are the guy you're asking about had nothing to do with it. If Stevens and Blanco are the same man, he had a lot to do with it. What, do you think he killed somebody? He's the corpse. He... He's... He's dead? What did he look like? About medium height. Dark hair, dark eyes, sort of dark complexion. He's dead. That's Blanco. Well, gee, well, who did it? That's what you're going to help me find out. Me? Mm-hmm. What did Blanco do around here? Same as we all do. Sleep? We're mechanics, mister. Last night was the guy's night on. It was supposed to be my turn, but he asked me to swap with him. Last night, eh? Yeah, so I swapped. It made no difference to me. Him, he made out like it was important. What did he work on while he was here last night? Uh, How should I know? Don't you keep records? Well, sure. Well, then that's how you should know. All right, come on in the office. All right. This is your record file, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yep, here's a report. Yesterday's date. Mechanic. Stevens, new job, Andrews. Oh, yeah, that's that Hudson Hornet out there. Belongs to real classy chick. Yeah, here's another report. Engine tune-up. Maddox. Maddox. Oh, yeah, that's a foreign job. The chauffeur-driven bus over there, but, you know, that's funny. Oh, why? Oh, I tuned the engine on that heap only three days ago, and I did a good job. Why should they want it done again? Let's go take a look. Maybe we can find out. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, my uh, name is Templer. I'd like to see Miss Maddox, please. Miss Maddox? Mm-hmm. Miss Virginia Maddox? Yes, please. Oh, forgive me for being inquisitive, sir, but... It isn't quite eight o'clock yet. A little early for a social call. Are you acquainted with Miss Maddox? Mm, We went to school together. (laughs) You did? Who is it, Carson? There's a gentleman calling on Miss Maddox. What's that? Calling on Miss... You wish to see Miss Maddox? Yes, but I didn't realize I'd create this much of a sensation. I must remember to include I'd like to see Miss Maddox in my repertoire of startling things to say. Well, I'm Mrs. Anders. I'm in charge of this household. Do you know Miss Maddox? The gentleman went to school with Miss Maddox. He went to school with her? That's what he said. You know, there's something about all this that reminds me of the time a friend of mine tried to negotiate a federal loan. Show the gentleman into the library, Carson. I'll go call Miss Maddox. If you'll just be seated, Mr. Templer. Oh, thanks. No, I didn't catch his name, but it's someone who went to school with you. I know. I'll bet it's that so. I... Why, you're not that so. I suppose I should say thank you, but uh, certainly you're not Miss Maddox. Why, of course I am. Now, don't tell me she's changed that much since your school days. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm the one who's changed. As a matter of fact, I feel myself changing slightly this very moment. Oh, well, when you find the right Virginia Maddox, you can both have a laugh over this. <laughs> yes, a good long laugh. Yeah, I think the time to laugh is right now. And you can all join in. You see, uh, this is the Virginia Maddox I'm looking for. I beg your pardon? There's a foreign car and a sort of Fraschini at the central garage registered to a Virginia Maddox at this address. Why, of course, it's mine. Yours? Oh, it's mine, all right. Although, naturally, I don't drive it. You see, I'm only eight. If you lived in California, you'd have been driving it for years. I'm afraid I don't understand what you're trying to say. I'm not saying, Mrs. Anders. I'm asking. Did you ever hear of a man named Blanco? Blanco? No. I don't believe I ever have. I haven't. Have you, Carson? No, Miss Virginia. I don't... Wait a minute. When I took the Asada down to the garage the other day, there... 
There's a new mechanic there. I think his name is Blanco. Now, that's interesting. You're a detective. That's what you are. A detective. No, Virginia. Besides, if I were a detective, I'd know the answer to something Carson just said without having to ask. And what does that mean? Suppose you tell me. What? How you knew that the new mechanic's name was Blanco when even the men who worked with him thought it was Stephen. Well, I... Maybe it was another man. I mean... I'll tell you what I mean, Carson. You're the first real link, the first hopeful sign that I'm heading in the right direction. Look here, what is this all about? Uh, Virginia, didn't I just hear your doll cry? Oh, Mr. Templer, I haven't played with dolls since I was a child. Oh, yes, of course, I should have known. You don't have to make an excuse, Mr. Templer. I know you want me to leave the room. You want to talk grown-up talk. (laughs) Virginia, you're the most fascinating woman I've met in years. But there are a few questions I want Carson to answer. Mister, whatever your name is, I'll give you just three seconds to put up your hands. Very well, if you insist. And now, sir, I should like to know what you mean by forcing your way into this house. But Uncle Roger, can't you see? He's a detective, just like in the comic book. Exactly. Fire that gun, sir, and I'll bleed ink all over this handsome carpet. He forced his way in on the pretense of seeing Virginia, Mr. Pierce. But it appears that it was really Carson he wanted to see. You know this man, Carson? No, Mr. Pierce. I never saw him before. His name is Templer. Templer? Simon Templer? And I'm certainly not fat, so am I, Virginia? <laughs> no. Oh, so you're the saint. I'm very glad to meet you. Then, uh, may I put my hands well, down? Of course. <laughs> Uh, But what is the reason for this rather strange and uh, unsaintly visit, Mr. Templer? Virginia, why don't you go try on your party dress, huh? The one you're going to wear this afternoon? Oh, I've already tried it. But how did you know I was going to Janice Fuller's party this afternoon? We comic book detectives know everything. Is Carson going to drive you in the car? Of course. The only way to get to Janice's house is by car. Unless you feel like walking all the way up the mountain. Mountain? Uh, Yes, it would have to be a mountain, wouldn't it? Mountain road with a great many curves. I, uh, I'm still waiting for your explanation, Templar. The child. Leave the room, Virginia. No, I want to Virginia? Oh, very well. But you know I'll find out everything anyway. Carson will tell me. Won't you, Carson? If I can, dear. Goodbye, Mr. Templar. Goodbye, Virginia. I've enjoyed meeting you. Uh, now, Mr. Templer, what did you want to see us about? About murder, Mr. Pierce. One that was committed a few hours back and another one that I hope to prevent. It's scheduled to take place in a few hours from now. What? Mr. Templer, please explain. A few hours ago, I was paid a call by a hoodlum named Blanco. This led to a brief but informative conversation with a lady barfly named Violet, which in turn led to an interesting half hour with a limousine named Isata Fraschini. And so, here I am. I, I'm afraid I I'm don't... I'm afraid I don't understand either. All that's clear to me as of now is that there's been a murder and there's a good chance there's going to be another one. Murder? Who, who was murdered, Mr. Templer? The aforementioned hoodlum, Blanco. But uh, shed no tears. He'll be missed only by the manufacturers of small arms ammunition who I'm afraid are going to notice a rather remarkable drop in their sales. What? Uh... It's the car that I'm here about, Mr. Pierce. The Asada Fraschini that spends its spare time at the central garage. The registration slip says that it lives here. Yes, that's our car. It is the central garage we use, Carson, is it not? Yes, sir. I uh, understand the car is owned by that charming child, although she informs me she doesn't actually drive. Yes, the car is hers. Mr. Pierce, I hope you won't think I have an ulterior motive. (laughs) I'm a little old for Virginia, but um, she's loaded. She's extremely wealthy. Uh, You see, Mr. Templer, shortly before Virginia's father died in South America, he drew up a will giving the child his entire fortune. I was designated her guardian until she comes of age. Then you're not really her uncle. I'm an uncle in name only. Oh, I see. Tell me something. Where in South America did the child's father die? In Honduras. That's Central America. Oh, is it? I do believe it is. Why do you ask, Mr. Templer? I wasn't really asking. I was shooting in the dark. What? Uh, When I return to this house in an hour or two, Mr. Pierce, we must all have another delightful talk. It will be a different kind of talk, perhaps, but 
nonetheless delightful. But what in heaven's name... Later, is... Mr. Pierce, later. Right now I have a date with a lady, a lady with violet hair who thinks I'm a bottle of scotch. <laughs> Package. Package. I didn't order any. Package from what? What is this? Hello, Violet. I'd like to have a talk with you. A talk? Say, look here, I don't know who you are, but... If you'll let me in, I'll... No, I... Be... Come on. You... What do you mean by forcing your way in here? Argument while always stimulating takes time, and I don't have much time. What's this all about? Blanco's dead. Blanco. Dead. What's that to me, Copper? I'm not the police. My name is Simon Templer. The saint? Joe Violet Kane, Frank Kane's wife. Widow. Yeah, that's another argument we're not going to have time for. You're nuts. If Frank were alive, I'd know it. Drink? No. There, that's better. All right, we can talk now. What's Blanco's murder got to do with me? You're next on the list. Hey, you dropped your glass. What did you mean by that crack? There's nobody... Good. May I help you? No, I... What? Who, who'd want to kill me? Somebody who's related to you. I'm not sure who. Related to me? But I, I've only got one... I don't feel so good. What is it? Oh, it burns. Violet, well, come on now, let me... No, listen to me. Picture on the table. Oh. Only relic. Hello there, Morgan. Hmm? Oh, why, it's Mr. Templer. Mm, what brings you out in the cream of the day? I'd imagine a man who runs an after-hours saloon would naturally indulge in after-hours sleep. Well, as a matter of fact, I was just about to go home, on my way to pick up my car. Not by any chance at the central garage? Oh, yes, how'd you know? Deduction. <laughs> That's incredible. Not too incredible. It's easy enough to deduce that a man would keep his car in a garage that it happens to be the owner of. Oh, so you know that, too. There isn't very much you miss, is there, Mr. Templer? Murder has a way of sharpening one's senses. Murder? A man named Blanco. Should we go into the garage? Right behind you. You, uh, said his name was Blanco? Yeah. And just now, uh, Violet Kane. Violet dead? But how? Someone evidently thought her whiskey would have a bigger kick with a pinch of poison in the bottle. It did. It's ghastly. Terrible. But who who did this thing? You did. Me? I realize it's rather early in the day for a man to be at his best, but don't you think that joke is in bad taste? If it were a joke, it would be. Ah, the Asata. Beautiful automobile that child owns, isn't it? Look at those lines. So sleek, so graceful. Get in, Morgan. Get in? It's a perfect morning for a drive. I don't think anyone would mind if we took her out. You see, I'm, uh, I'm rather friendly with the owner. She likes me. To her, I'm a character straight out of her favorite comic book. Get in, Morgan. No, thanks. Why not? We'll take her climbing. I'd like to see what she'll do on a mountain road. Road with a couple of hairpin curves. Come on. No, some other time, Saint. Won't be another time. Or didn't you see the beautiful job Blanco did on the tie rod? No. Sawed through until it's hanging together by the proverbial hair. One sharp turn, like the turns you'd find on a mountain road, the steering system collapses. And there's an accident. Yeah. Yeah, Blanco did an excellent job until he learned who the victim was to be. It was too much for even his stomach. How oh, you're dreaming. Why would anybody want to wreck an expensive bus like this? A little girl who is going to a party on top of a mountain this afternoon has too much money, Morgan. If she should happen to fall off that mountain in this car, some happy next of kin would have a very happy fortune. Well, that lets me out, Saint. I'm nobody's next of kin. There was a picture Violet pointed out to me before she died. A snapshot taken at a wedding. And do you know who the bride and groom were? Okay. 
Okay, we've talked long enough, Saint. Frank Kane left a lot of money when he died. I'm too close to it. That's a... another mistake you made, Morgan. Huh? Who? It's me, Frank Kane. Kane? Say, what are you pulling your Carson the chauffeur? Carson's only his nom de plastic surgery. It's Kane with a new name and a new face. Yeah, but with the same old trigger eye. Kane, Kane, Kane are you. <laughs> Yeah, but never mind me. Don't let him get away. You took care of that. Oh. You're the one who didn't let him get away, Kane. A man loses all inclination to run when there's a bullet in his oh. kneecap. You keep until the police come. Good. Oh. Good. Saint. Virginia. Little girl. See? Hey, look. See? Don't try to talk now. I gotta tell you. See the she... The she... Don't worry, Kane. Your daughter will be safe. I'm going to make sure of that right now. It, it's beyond belief, Mr. Templer. What sort of fiend could even dream of harming that child? It was a team of fiends, Mr. Pierce. And one of the fiends has just given up his membership in the inhuman race. There were two of them? Yes, Miss Anders, two of them. Morgan and someone else. Someone who would be uh, Virginia's only surviving relative once Violet Kane, the child's mother, had been erased from the picture. The only surviving relative and uh, inheritor of the child's fortune. But we know of no relatives, do we, Roger? There was only Frank Kane, her father. But uh, legally, at least, he was dead. Now he's dead in fact as well. But there is another relative. I'm amazed that you don't know. Who? Violet pointed to a wedding picture. She was dying. It was your wedding picture, Miss Sanders. You were the bride. Morgan was the groom. Yes. Uh, I was married to Morgan once. But surely that doesn't mean that I... Look here, Templar. This is preposterous. It would be even more preposterous if Violet hadn't had a sentimental nature. What do you mean? A snapshot. She wrote the names of each member of the wedding party on the snapshot. The name? Mm hmm. She had your name written. Rose, isn't it? What makes the photograph really interesting is the man standing next to the groom. It was you, Mr. Pierce? Of course it was me. Is it a crime to attend a wedding or have one's name written on a picture? No, but in this case it solves a crime because, Mr. Pierce, under your picture, Violet affectionately wrote, My dear brother Roger. <gasps> What? You... Don't, don't, you... don't bother. I'm sure I've been called it before. Come on, brother. We're going visiting. There's a new district attorney downtown who's dying to make himself a reputation. Virginia, I've um, brought you a present. Oh, Mr. Templer, you shouldn't have. But I'm so glad you did. <laughs> but go on, open it. Oh. oh! It's the most beautiful doll I ever saw. You did tell me once that you hadn't played with dolls since you were a child, but... Uh... Mr. Templer, I'll tell you a secret. What, Virginia? I just said that to be sophisticated. Hmm. Something tells me that a certain young man named Fatso is going to be trimmed right down to your size. You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Maggie Morley as Violet and Anne Whitfield as Little Virginia. Edmund McDonald played Blanco, Jack Moyles, Carson. Ted Von Elts was Roger, Irene Tedro, Mrs. Anders. Morgan was played by Barney Phillips and the garage man by Jerry Hausner. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night.
This Adventure of the Saint was written by Michael Cramoy. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charters, is a James L. Safia production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. And all you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. This is Don Stanley speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Every Sunday on NBC, meet two delightful and often confusing families, the Blandings and the Harrisons. Mr. and Mrs. Blanding stars Cary Grant and Betsy Drake as the proud but bewildered owners of the famous dream house. And the Phil Harris Alice Faye show features the hilarious Harrises and their friends in typical amazing Harris situations. Hear them later today. Fred Allen, Ed Wynn, and B. Lilly join the big show today on NBC. Welcome back. Well, a different sort of case. Simon uh, gets into a bit of a tougher mode than his usual uh, lot performance uh, because he suspects what's at hand. And when it comes to the death of a child, not something he will play with. That scene before the woman died of the poisoning was very short, brief, and absolutely to the point. The idea of her viewing uh, the saint as a comic character uh, was interesting because, of course, the saint uh, actually was in his own comic book uh, at the time, as had been mentioned on the show previously. A very uh, interesting cast, Edmund uh, McDonald was actually uh, played the police counterpart of Dan Holliday in the very first series we did, Box 13. Uh, Ann Whitfield, who played uh, Virginia, was actually uh, 13, or I should say 12 going on 13, and just at the start of her career. Uh, she had made a uh, movie, uh, appeared in The Gunfighter, and uh, made a TV episode in the forgotten series The Big Yellow Theater. Um, but she would have a very successful career um, over television, uh, from, per, uh, from the 1950s till about the mid 70s, appearing, uh, in everything from Ironside, Gunsmoke, uh, Perry Mason, and, uh, Emergency. And then, uh, she made a film for Worldwide Pictures and, you know, a couple TV movies. And then a film that was set in, uh, Mississippi, where she's from. Uh, she actually, uh, had a small part in that. So another one of these uh, character actors who really made their living uh, appearing in everything, and this was one of her very early uh, appearances. Jacqueline asked a, a question on Facebook regarding uh, the episode The Carnival Murder from a couple weeks ago. She asked, where was Louie? Uh, good question. Um, I think uh, Louie was not in every episode, and part of it was... Uh, doubtless, uh, you know, how much do you want to contrive to bring a cab driver into the plot? And part of it was that Lawrence Dopkin really was an in-demand uh, actor, not only over radio, but also in film. But don't worry, Louie will be back. Well, that will do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with The Adventures of Ellery Queen. And next Monday... Join us once again for The Saint. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio...